consider the data in these two tables. One contains details of some famous fathers and the other some famous children. There's a one-to-many relationship between these tables. One father can have many children. Charles Mountbatten Windsor, for example, has two boys, William and Harry. Homer Simpson has three kids, Bart, Lisa and Maggie. This one-to-many relationship is a property of the data. The children table includes a column indicating each child's father. If Homer Simpson was removed from the father's table, the referential integrity of these tables would be lost because we'd have three children records referring to a father that didn't exist. The referential integrity of the relationship can, however, be enforced by the Relational Database Management System by placing a foreign key constraint on the children table. Alternatively, it can be enforced by means of program code in any application that makes use of these tables. This pair of tables has no constraints, but the data still makes sense. We have a famous father who has no biological children, the Pope. We also have a child with no parent, little Annie the orphan, poor Annie. To select data from both tables at the same time, you need to perform a query that joins them together. This SQL statement produces a result set with data from both tables. The column list after the keyword select specifies which columns should appear in the result set. Notice that each column name is unique, so a simple list like this is fine. If these two tables had a column with the same name, it would no longer be clear which column the select statement was referring to. So often you'll see column names preceded with their table names like this. Most SQL code generators will prefix column names with table names, even if there is no ambiguity. With these two tables, all of the column names are unique, which means the simpler version of the SQL statement is perfectly valid. The second line of this query specifies the tables being queried, and how they should be joined, and how they are related. The term Fathers in a join children indicates which tables are being joined together. It makes no difference if you write children in a join fathers. The on clause specifies how the two tables are related, which columns contain common data. In this case, the content of the child father field for each record in the children table corresponds to a father ID in the father's table. The on clause can also be written the other way round. That is, on children.childfather equals fathers.fatherid. However, when it comes to the on clause, it is necessary to qualify the two column names with the names of the tables therein. Because this is an inner join, the query only retrieves records which have at least one related record in the other table. So we can only see fathers who have children, and we can only see children who have fathers. Annie and the Pope are missing. This SQL statement is almost identical to the previous one but this time it's applying a left outer join between the two tables instead of an inner join. This can have a big impact on the results. All of the records from the father's table are retrieved, whether they have children or not, so this time we can see the Pope. The expression fathers left outer join children means retrieve everything from the table named on the left hand side of the expression namely the father's table. Then any matching records from the table named on the right hand side of the expression. If the expression had been written with the children table named on the left and the father's table named on the right, a different set of results would have been produced. This time including all of the children and their matching parents if they have them. This means the difference between a left outer join and a right outer join 
is somewhat trivial. This right outer join retrieves all of the children because the children column is named on the right hand side of the join expression. This left outer join does exactly the same thing. Because left and right outer joins are essentially the same thing, but with their arguments reversed, they can be used interchangeably. Of course, you need to be mindful of the order in which you name the tables. Neither one is better than the other, although many programmers prefer to mention the most important tables first in their SQL statements. So there seems to be a preference for left outer joins. A full outer join will retrieve all of the records from both tables, as you might expect. Of course, this time it's irrelevant which table is named first. You're going to get everything anyway. It should be noted that not all database management systems support full outer joins. You can't do them in Microsoft Access, for example. Finally, you may come across the so-called cross-join. This happens when there's no join at all. The result is every possible combination of records from both tables. There are three records in fathers and six in children, so the result set contains 18 rows. With these data, the cross-join serves no real purpose, but imagine you're setting up a competition in which each person from one team has to play against each person in another team. The cross-join can be used to generate a convenient checklist 